Hi friends, today is 14th of November which is also the children's day. So, I wish all the children very happy children's day. Let us all keep the child within us alive. Incidentally, it is also the world diabetes day today. In the year 1922, exactly 100 years back, Sir Frederick Banting co-discovered insulin along with Charles Best. The very next year, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine for this discovery. To honor his achievements, the International Diabetes Federation in association with the World Health Organization created what is called the World Diabetes Day. It was decided that it would be observed on 14th of November every year as this was also the birthday of Sir Banting. The discovery of insulin was one of the greatest breakthroughs in the history of modern medicine. This ensured that millions of people with type 1 diabetes could be treated and could lead a near normal life. The diagnosis of type 1 diabetes before the discovery of insulin was a death sentence to patients as most patients would die within one and a half to two years from the onset of disease. Even 100 years after this remarkable discovery, the disease of diabetes is spreading much faster and is affecting the mankind in a much severe way than ever before. Nearly half a billion people worldwide are suffering from diabetes and the sad thing is 50 percent of these people do not know that they have this disease. Diabetes was responsible for 6.5 million deaths in the year 2021. Almost 1000 billion dollars were spent last year for the management of diabetes which accounted for 9 percent of the total health care healthcare cost that was spent worldwide. India is called the diabetes capital of the world. Roughly 70 million people in India are suffering from diabetes and more than 300 million people have a condition called pre-diabetes. The age of onset of diabetes is decreasing and many young people are being diagnosed with diabetes. In spite of so much money being spent, the prevalence of diabetes is increasing along with its associated complications. Most people with long standing diabetes have complications like heart disease, stroke, loss of vision, kidney damage which leads to dialysis, damage to arteries, nerves, infections, diabetic food which can lead to gangrene or even amputation of the leg. Since last 100 years, we have seen major improvements in the field of diabetic care. Like we have modern medicines, we have different forms of insulin, we have newer drug delivery systems and we also have the advantage of technology in improving the patient care and also the compliance of the patient. Despite such advancements, there are no signs to suggest that the disease is coming under control. So, there has to be a fundamental problem in the way we have understood the disease and also we are treating the disease. As per the understanding of modern medicine, diabetes is a chronic progressive disease. What this suggests is once a person becomes diabetic, the disease slowly progresses with age and it cannot be cured or it cannot be reversed. One must try and understand that diabetes is predominantly a lifestyle disease and more specifically a dietary disease which can only be cured or reversed by lifestyle modifications. Medicines do help in controlling the blood sugar levels and also decreasing the complication rates. Today there is sufficient scientific evidence to suggest that diabetes can be reversed and patients can be free of medications. As doctors it is our responsibility to educate the people about this new concept so that the patients can decide the future course of management. Reversal of diabetes is done by a systematic process of change in lifestyle and habits and this might not be feasible for everyone. But even minor changes in lifestyle practices does go a long way in controlling the disease. Today the problem is different specialists treat different diseases. This fragmented approach and focus on treatment with medications has only added to the problem. It is important to know that the underlying cause of type 2 diabetes is insulin resistance which is also a contributory factor for other diseases like hypertension, obesity, heart disease, stroke and certain cancers. The most important factor that is contributing to insulin resistance is eating too much of sugar, too much of refined carbohydrates. Unfortunately, sugar is hidden under different names in most packed foods. For example, a 330 ml of carbonated beverage has 35 grams of sugar which is almost equal to 7 teaspoons of sugar. This high concentration of sugar causes a rapid increase in blood sugar levels which spike the insulin levels. 
if the insulin levels stay persistently higher for a longer period of time the body develops ins resistance to insulin and the pancreas compensates by producing more insulin this leads to hyperinsulinemia that is high insulin levels in the blood which contributes to insulin resistance and the vicious cycle of hyperinsulinemia and insulin resistance continues the high insulin levels causes obesity as insulin is a fat storage hormones and causes accumulation of fat particularly around the belly leading to central obesity the accumulated fat gets locked up due to high insulin levels and this leads to a one way street of fat accumulation in the body the only way by which the body can use this fat as fuel is by lowering the insulin levels and improving the insulin sensitivity the other problem in the present approach to type 2 diabetes is using blood sugar level to diagnose this disease it is quite clear that many years before the diagnosis of diabetes the insulin level starts going up thereby keeping the blood sugar levels under control if someone needs to be diagnosed of diabetes early it is useful to check for blood insulin levels and not blood sugar levels if you can understand the basics of diabetes it is not difficult to treat it or reverse it so one should focus on healthy eating add sufficient amount of protein good quality fats fruits and vegetables to your diet avoid or decrease the intake of sugar refined carbohydrates packed processed and fried food avoid fruit juices and carbonated beverages as they have high quantities of sugar which leads to insulin resistance time restricted feeding that is eating within a time frame of 10 to 12 hours and eating only when we are hungry improves insulin sensitivity avoid smoking alcohol and exposure to harmful chemicals keep your weight in check your waist circumference should be less than half of your height exercise regularly at least 30 minutes a day and focus on strength training which helps in building muscles as muscles can store more amount of glucose in the form of glycogen adequate sleep and managing stress are vitally important in managing all chronic diseases so what it needs is a fundamental change in the approach to diabetes and other chronic diseases and this change should come not only from medical fraternity but also from dietitians policy makers and the food industry unless we do the right things now the day is not far when getting diabetes at the age of 20 or 30 becomes quite common so on this world diabetes day let us all follow healthy lifestyle practices and protect not only us but also our children from this devastating disease if you found that this video was helpful please like and share this video with your friends and do subscribe to my channel so that i can create more content like this if you have any questions or want to know more about how we can naturally treat these diseases type your questions and post it in the comment section below i'll try to answer them thank you